beautiful, beautiful Barbados. Thank you. Gem of the Caribbean Sea. Come back to my island, Barbados. Come back to my island. Good morning to my family and friends at St. James. This is sending a quick note and a lot of love from here at my home in Tino Terrace, Florida. Sorry, from Tino Terrace in Barbados, sorry. Um, yes, so my heart is still with you all. Just wanted to say all is well, to say thank you for allowing me to spend this time in Barbados to get this work-life balance back in, in order. Um, to those who are celebrating Father's Day, have a blessed Father's Day. To our African-American brothers and sisters, have a blessed Juneteenth and just continue to look after yourselves. I look forward to being back with you all during the course of the week and every blessing to you. See you soon. Bye-bye.
reading from Sam, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, took the provisions and went to Jesse, had, went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the embankment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. David heard him. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are just a boy, and he's a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor, put a bronze helmet on his head, and clothed him with a cloak of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the arm, and he tried in vain to walk, but he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand, and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him. He was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you have come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give you your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell down onto the ground. The word of the Lord. Sorry. 
Psalm 9, 9 to 20. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood will remember them. He will not forget the cry of the afflicted. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gate of death, so that I may tell of all your praises and rejoice in your salvation. In the gates of the city of Zion. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and in the snare they set it, they set it, they set is their own foot caught. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are trapped in the works of their own hands. The wicked shall be given over to the grave. And also all the peoples that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. And the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Put fear upon them, O Lord. Let the ungodly know they are but mortal. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, and ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. As we prepare to receive the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be led in by what is considered to be the Emancipation Anthem in the Caribbean Redemption Song by Bob Marley.
Jesus asks, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. For many in the Caribbean, Redemption Song by Bob Marley is the anthem of emancipation. Considered to be one of Marley's finest works, its lyrics are derived from a speech given by the brilliant New York-based Pan-Africanist leader and Jamaica national hero, Marcus Mosiah Garvey. This anthem speaks of a people who through their faith and hope and strength to love, cast off the shackles of enslavement and oppression and took their rightful stage, places on the world stage, succeeding in almost every field of endeavor. Juneteenth, which we celebrate today, is the oldest African-American celebration of freedom from enslavement. Notwithstanding President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation on the 1st of January, 1863, in some slave states, that proclamation was not enforced until two and a half years later, on the 19th of June, 1865. We have to come to terms with, in this nation, that notwithstanding the self-evident truths contained in the doc the Declaration of Independence, notwithstanding um, Amendment 14 to the Constitution, notwithstanding the Reconstruction era and Civil Rights Movement, notwithstanding our entry into the 21st century, African Americans continue to suffer the burden of centuries of injustice and inequality and the perpetuation of systemic racism. The recent emergence of the Black Lives Matters movement is a response to this reality. <coughs> Excuse me, and to say Black Lives Matter doesn't mean that Black lives are more important than other lives or that all lives don't matter. It simply affirms and responds to the systematic and systemic devaluing of Black lives and calls on all of us to bear witness even as we acknowledge that oppression and discrimination takes many intersecting forms today. In the Caribbean, Emancipation Day is a public holiday, but there is still a lack of appreciation for what transpired and what is the darkest period in the history of humanity. Lord Mansfield, the 18th century Chief Justice of England held that the state of slavery is so odious that nothing can be suffered to support it. Based on an analysis of the transatlantic slave trade database, it is estimated that about 12.5 million enslaved Africans were shipped to the Caribbean North and South America, 12 and a half million enslaved Africans. It is further estimated that about 10.7 million survived that horrific Middle Passage. But these figures become even more startling when you compare to the fact that at, at, in 1800, the population of Britain was just over 10 million, the population of the US just over 5 million, and less than half a million people in the British Caribbean. We also need to understand that not all slavery was emancipated and eradicated with emancipation. There are forms of modern day slavery that we must combat and eradicate. But how did slavery happen? How did it perpetuate itself for centuries, this abomination? 
and President John F. Kennedy suggests the only thing for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. But ironically, most slaveholders would not have defined themselves as evil. In fact, George Washington and many abolitionists that followed had interests in slavery. So how did it happen? I return to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, for an inkling. There we hear that no one can serve two masters, for a servant will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And this atrocity, the atrocity of slavery was perpetuated out of a love of wealth. The material gain that people sought under the guise of carrying out a civilizing mission. A pungent concoction of religion, science, and social theory fed this Eurocentric narcissism that gave them a sense of dominion all over the world. Rooted in racism, Europeans and their North American cousins dichotomize humanity between the civilized and savages, and this gave them a perverted justification for the genocide of Native Americans and the enslavement of Africans to toil in the new world. As I said before, Redemption Song speaks of a people who through their faith and hope and strength to love cast off the shackles of oppression and took their rightful place on the world stage. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. talks about the odiousness of this racism. He talks about in the US that he says the tragic attempt to give moral sanction to an economically profitable system gave birth to slavery and the doctrine of white supremacy. Religion and the Bible, he says, were cited to crystallize the status quo. Religion and Bible were used to support the enslavement of others. And you know today, while a majority of Americans favorably view the legacy of Dr. King and often refer to his I have a dream and content of character speeches, we must remember in this heyday, the civil rights movement wasn't seen as peaceful and Dr. King was deemed a public enemy, reviled and physically attacked for standing against injustice and inequality. We have come a way, but we still have a long way to go. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, we hear the question being asked at the judgment of the nations. When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king answers them, truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. There has to be meaningful sacrifice by those who have gained at the expense of others. This meaningful sacrifice is required if we are to really form a more perfect union. In post-war Germany, the country accepted that it needed, there was a need for moral and material indemnity for the unspeakable crimes committed in the name of the German people during the Holocaust. In post-apartheid South Africa, they established the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to record the deprivation, violence, injustice, including murder towards black people by a white dominated state system. The United States is at a crossroads, but it has come to forks in the road before. At its inception, the country could have pursued 
building a utopia based on the promises of the Pilgrim Fathers. But instead, they chose genocide and slavery. At the conclusion of the Civil War was another turning point when reconciliation was possible, but the Reconstruction era was brought to a premature end at the expense of the full citizenship of black people. Another opportunity was presented at the conclusion of Jim Crow era, but again, the country omitted to guarantee the full citizenship of African Americans by taking the path of gradualism, seeking to institute progress through legislation that was constantly blocked, challenged, or reversed. Today, the nation is again at an inflection point and is able to address the wrongs inflicted on African Americans and affirm that black lives matter and that George Floyd Jr. and others didn't die in vain. Institutional and systemic relation, racism has been to this society and economy an invisible driver of the dispossession of African Americans. And as such, reparations are required to redress this historic disadvantage. Not every wrong can be made right, but it is important to address the rebalance, the inherent and destructive white privilege that has been built into the history of America and its intimacy with racial violence, social justice, and legislative inequality. The king tells us, truly I tell you, just as you did to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. We pray, we pray that these United States will take the road less traveled to become out of many one. And as we journey in faith, towards that day of unity and equality, we will hold to Michael chapter six, verse eight, where Micah tells us to do justice, to love kindly, and to walk humbly with our God. Let's keep hope alive. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now profess our faith in our triune God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Anglican and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare to offer up the prayers of the people, 
Let us focus our hearts, our minds, our souls. Focus on God's call to love. To love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Let us pray. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the, pres for the peace of the world, the welfare of the Holy Church, the United Church of North India, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, Josh, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the county of Broward, this city of Hollywood, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For social barriers which divide and crumble, suspicions disappear and hatred cease. For our divisions, that our divisions are healed and we live in justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirmed, for the widows and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, especially those on our parish prayer list. Mary Rodriguez, Abby Watts, Stan Allen Jr., Sarah Allen, Nicholas and Jonathan Saunders, Hedra and Ed Reed, Riley Rupert Richendola, Rodney Paisley, Cecilia Griffith, Angelica Williams, Cecile Patricia James, Jane, Zachary and Isaiah Williams, Nicole Goodwin, Pat Miller, Ronaldo Schaefer, Cedric Straker, Stephanie and Jackson Gomez, Theodora Jura Khan, Yvette Baker, Jackie and James Lowe, Zoila Barat, Veronica Gatto, Maud Fernanda, Jan Pushkar, Rudy Ford, Veron Anderson, Jackie and John Young, Betty K. Stanford, Thelma Camacho, Irene Wilde, Anika Hopkins, Amelia Hopkins, Veronica Joyce, Rebecca and Julius George, Roberta Grimmer, Karen Bacchus, Ben Martinez, Donna Talbert, Shante Potter, Laurie Jasper, Sherry Acorn, Valerie McCartney, and Olga Vasquez. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those celebrating birthdays, Roberta Grimmer and Sandy Burns, those celebrating anniversaries, Linda and Marvin Beagle, and Barbara and Jim Faulkner, and for anyone or anything you wish to mention, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the clients of the Jubilee Center, the people of Madagascar, particularly the women and children, the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, and for all those dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering, without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint James, Saint John the Baptist, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God, to thee, O Lord, our God. And now we conclude our prayers 
for the collect of protection from hurricanes and other natural disasters. Almighty God, creator and redeemer of humankind, grant to us, your supplicant people, protection against the ravages of hurricanes, fires, floods, and other calamities, that in tranquility of weather, we may rejoice in the comfort that we ever desire and always make right use of your great goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our act of penitence, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We say together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us continue to share God's peace. God's peace, God's peace, God's peace. Before we go into Holy Communion, I just want to share a few notices. First, we want to wish all of the fathers, the grandfathers, this, the godfathers, the stepfathers, all those men who have stepped in and to provide guidance, support to young people and children, we wish you a blessed Father's Day. We hope that this is but one of many days that you receive joy from those who you love and care for. Have a blessed day. As I said at the beginning of this service, I am remote working from Barbados, and I'm thankful that the parish has allowed me, as now that there's the opportunity to travel, to spend quality time with my family in Barbados to get that work-life balance that has been missing for the last year. I want to make, again, two small notices. One is that hurricane season has again started. Please begin to make the necessary preparations. And the second one, now that Maya is in Barbados, we are going to need someone to assist with the live feed. If we don't get a person to assist with this, those who are at home who are unable to join us for worship will not be able to participate in our service. I do hope that in the spirit of love and neighborliness, somebody who can do this will step forward. Those are, the, uh, those are our notices. They're all detailed in the bulletin, so please read. And we will now begin to proceed to the preparation for Holy Communion with the hymn, Lift Your Voice and Sing.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food of new and unended life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin, St. James, St. John the Baptist, and all your saints into the joy of of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us give thanks for this foretaste of the heavenly banquet by praying together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please bow your heads to receive God's blessing. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth and give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and proclaim the good works and word of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, our service has ended. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Bye.